This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Laurie Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Episode 19, Manga at Otakon. Japanese manga magazine Betsukami has announced the shoujo title Dengenki Daisy is set to end in October in the magazine's November issue. Viz licensed this title back in 2010 under its shoujo beat imprint. It's about Teru Kure Bayashi, a high school girl who is all alone since losing her parents and more recently her older brother. But her brother arranged for Teru to never be alone, as she has a mysterious friend named Daisy, whom she never sees but communicates by text. When she accidentally breaks a window at school, she comes under the control of school janitor Kurosaki and becomes his slave. He is the complete opposite of Teru's beloved Daisy. I really enjoyed Dengenki Daisy. I love the relationship between Teru and Kurosaki, and the mystery of what her brother and Daisy were doing is intriguing. I've only read five volumes so far, so I really need to go back and do some catching up. The series will be 15 volumes total. Viz has 12 volumes out so far, and it is available in print and digital. Yu Watase is doing a one-shot for the Flowers manga magazine spin-off, Zoku Flowers, that was scheduled to be released last week. Honma Kaiden, or Real Ghost Stories, is 52 pages of scary true stories. I like Watase's horror, and I love ghost stories, so this is like a match made in heaven. It's too bad Viz doesn't have a shoujo magazine anymore. We could get this as a special feature, like all the shonen one shots get in Shonen Jump. I miss shoujo beat. Princess Knight has become quite a hot property lately. Vertical Inc. released the original series in two volumes last year, and just last week released its sequel, Twin Knights. Japan has been looking at the old Tezuka property, too. Publisher... Home Shaw's online manga magazine, Purato Home, recently launched a reboot of the series, Reborn, The Masked Man, and The Ribbon Knight. The original Princess Knight was one of the original shoujo titles aimed at a tween girl audience, but this new reboot seems to be aimed more at teenage boys. The characters are more realistic in appearance and don't look like Tezuka's characters at all, and there is some graphic violence. Tezuka Productions is collaborating on the project, so it seems to have their blessing, but I really wonder how much of the original story will be used. Moving on to the Viz Top 10 Digital Manga List for August 2013. Shoujo keeps its four spots, while Shonen keeps a hold of the top three. There is a new number one series, but it still features that kid with the five-fingered hairdo. Yukio R Volume 1 takes the top spot from Yu-Gi-Oh! Volume 3. It is followed by Yu-Gi-Oh! Volume 5 at number 2 and Volume 6 at number 3. It's a Yu-Gi-Oh! trifecta. Kare First Love Volume 9 moves up one spot from Volume 7's to number 4, while Happy Hustle High Volume 2 falls one to number 5. Case Close returns after a week off the list with Volume 28 coming in at number 6, while Imadoke Volume 1 debuts at number 7. Black Cat Volume 6 moves up one from last week to number 8, and Red River returns with Volume 18 at number 9. The list rounds up with some hot, fresh Yakitate Japan Volume 22 coming in at number 10. It's pretty amazing that Yu-Gi-Oh! could take the top three spots all at once. Yu-Gi-Oh! obviously has a lot of fans still. It was kind of surprising to see Shoujo keep its four spots, but not really that the new Watase series to the site was one of them. I'm also happy to see Red River make it back. Only ten volumes left of this epic series. Raw Grand makes its debut on the site this week. It's based loosely on the video game Blue Dragon, and it's from the creative team of Suneo Takano and Takeshi Obata, who also did Death Note and Bakuman. As a young child, the boy Rawl has his shadow possessed by the powerful blue dragon Rand, who lays waste to his home village and the land around it. He is imprisoned in total darkness, where he makes friends with his shadow and his female tutor. But when the shadows rise up and begin attacking the kingdom, Rawl and Grand are called on to save it. I've had this volume in my to-read pile for a long time now. Might be a good time to dig it out and finally read it. I've put it off because it leans toward the etchy, which isn't really my thing. Magi is a title that is new both to digital and print. It's been making waves in the fan community ever since the anime showed last year, and the manga has been fairly anticipated since Viz announced it. The story follows Aladdin, who, accompanied by his 
Jin, Ugo, and his friend Alibaba had set out into the endless dunes of the desert to find the labyrinth in search of fortune. I'm looking forward to reading this title. I love fairy tales and folk tales and enjoy seeing different takes on them. In a recent survey, Viz Manga readers were asked what genre they enjoy most. The answers explain a lot of the trends that are seen in the top selling manga on the site. Of the six categories that made up the answers, food manga had the lowest with 2.9% of the audience. Just slightly ahead of the foodies was sports manga with 4.8%. Gaming manga came in next at 7.9%. Romance is the first category to hit double digits with 15.4% of the respondents saying love manga is their favorite. The second most popular genre goes to exorcist manga at 25%, and the most popular genre among viz manga readers is quest manga with 44.1%. The numbers stay pretty close to the beginning until we get to romance, where the percentage is almost double that of the gaming readers. You can see this reflected in the top 10, where there is consistently 3-4 to four shoujo titles every week. Most shonen manga could probably be put into the quest manga genre, so it comes of little surprise that it is the most popular. It is also reflected in the top 10 list nearly every week, as two-thirds of it is shown in. Seems I missed the book scan for June, where manga really showed its strength by taking 10 of the 20 spots. Some highlights include Vertical's Gundam The Origin Volume 2 coming in at number 20, and Shoujo Titles Skip Beat Volume 31, and Alice in the Country of Clover, Ace of Hearts, appearing alongside Usual Suspects Sailor Moon and Naruto. Last month also had the debut of Attack on Titan make it to the top 20. July shows a slight drop down to 8 titles, but with Sailor Moon Volume 12 taking the number 1 spot. Also hanging out in the top 5 is the new Naruto Volume 61 at number 4. New manga titles don't appear until number 10 with Blue Exorcist Volume 10, followed closely behind by Attack on Titan Volume 1, moving up 7 to number 12. Alice in the Country of Clover series remains on the list, but with a different title. It's Cheshire Cat Waltz at number 13, which is followed closely by Bleach, Volume 57, and Black Butler, Volume 15, at 14 and 15, respectively. The final manga for July is Sailor Moon, Volume 11, still hanging on at number 17. In my previous analysis of book scan numbers, I ruminated on what Kodansha's next big hit would be after Sailor Moon ended. And I found my answer. Attack on Titan is sweeping through the fandom, as cosplay for it was seen all over Otakon, and it steadily moved up Bookscan, showing its gained traction with readers as well. Seven Seas licensings of the Alice in the Country of series really seems to be paying off, as the title seemed to consistently hit Bookscan as well. Manga at Otakon The big anime fan gathering, Otakon, took place last week. As has seemed to become the pattern this year, New manga licenses were sparse. The first announcement came on Friday from Seven Seas Entertainment with their license of Yuri Manga Gakuen Polizi. Seven Seas is becoming the go-to publisher for Yuri. It's another Milk Morinaga title to go with her previous titles Girlfriends and Kisses, Sighs, and Cherry Blossom Pink. Gakuen Polizi is about Sasami Aoba, who has always wanted to become a defender of justice. She gets her wish as she becomes a police officer, and her first assignment is to infiltrate Hanagaki All Girls High School and ferret out any trouble she may find. On her first day, she discovers a supposed book thief is also an undercover police officer, Sakuraba Midori, who claims to be the officer in charge and not Sasami. The girls become rivals, partners, and maybe something more? I haven't had much interest in Yuri any more than I have in BL, but having read some reviews of other Morinaga titles, I might give them and this title a try. I'll give it a wait and see for now. Viz didn't announce any new titles, but they did announce the return of an old one. Monster by Naoki Urasawa will be released in omnibus format starting in July of next year. It seems to be a good time to bring this title back. Urasawa was recognized for a second time for his 20th Century Boys titles, and there is talk of Guillermo del Toro wanting to do a TV adaptation of Monster. The omnibus editions will be two-in-one and reduce the series from 18 volumes to nine. It's the story of Dr. Tenma, an up-and-coming surgeon in Germany who decides to save the life of a boy over a wealthy politician. This decision leads to his downfall and sends him on a quest to find the boy, who seems to be a serial killer. 
Feeling responsible for the boy, Tenma is now trying to stop him as he himself is being chased by the police for the same murders. If you've been wanting to read Urasawa's first series in English, get these volumes. There's no point in waiting for a digital version since Urasawa has said he doesn't want his manga available digitally. I think it's a short-sighted decision, but it's his work and he can do with it what he pleases. The final new license is from Vertical. It's a title that people have asked anyone and everyone for. Fumi Yoshinaga's What Did You Eat Yesterday? The title follows Shiro Kake, a lawyer, and his lover Kenji Yabuki, a hairstylist, and tells their story through their cooking and eating habits. It will also feature recipes of the food seen in the chapters. While I love the Yoshinaga titles I've read, I've never been much of a foodie. I don't go for the food porn that is featured in so many of Yoshinaga's works, but she has a real talent for making characters interesting and has a great sense of humor. I wasn't going to be excited for this title, but reading a preview of the first chapter has reminded me what fun her titles can be, and I have to change my mind. Yoshinaga's work has been spread out among publishers with Viz, Yen Press, and Digital Manga Publishing all having nabbed some of her titles. I hope this one is a hit for Vertical, and all the calls for its licensing translates into sales, and not just big talk from fans. This is a must-buy. Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at Manga Xanadu, all one word. Until next time, farewell from the Manga Dome.